So, Andrew Tate is back at it again, dissing vegans on Rumble since he's been completely cancelled off of social media. He recently went viral again after an interview with Pierce Morgan. And, you know, Pierce Morgan couldn't debate his way out of a wet paper bag without interrupting and setting traps and making absolutely ridiculous false claims, but he seemed to hold his own against Andrew Tate because some of Andrew Tate's ideas are quite easy to debunk. But the Tate brothers are in a live stream on Rumble after the Pierce Morgan debate chatting about veganism. So let's have a listen. What's your opinion on veganism? Most subscribed anti-vegan YouTuber just got banned on YouTube for nothing about, you know, just talking facts about veganism and gender neutral rules. Yeah, great. One of the most psychotic anti-vegans on YouTube got banned finally off of YouTube for spreading hate. The guy is an absolute psychopath, acts like a psychopath and has psychopathic ideas and he wonders why he got deleted. He didn't get deleted for speaking facts about veganism. He's... <laughs> He's a raw meat eating psycho who thinks it's okay to eat people. What are your, what are your opinions on veganism? Well, I'll tell I'll tell you my my the reason I'm first. the reason I'm anti-vegan is cuz it goes against the law of universe, it goes against the laws of reality. The reason he's anti-vegan, meaning he supports the exploitation and cruelty of animals, meaning he thinks animals should be enslaved and commodified and decapitated for a sandwich is it goes against the laws of the universe. Please tell us more, Andrew. The idea that you don't have to kill something for you yourself to live and survive is asinine. Every single thing that exists on the planet has to destroy something else for it to exist. Plants destroy nutrients to exist. Stars absorb other stars to exist. For you to exist as a sovereign individual, for you to exist as an entity, you must destroy something else. Non-sentient plants destroy non-sentient nutrients in order to live. Who cares? Like, what are you trying to say? A non-sentient ball of gas in space swallows another non-sentient ball of gas in space. Like, who cares? Does that give us the right to enslave and kill billions of animals? Like, what are you trying to say, bro? You destroy plants even if you don't destroy animals. Who cares if I destroy plants? Plants are not sentient conscious beings having a subjective experience. A plant is a mindless biological life form that reacts to stimuli there's no one in there who cares about a plant and insects and insects and beavers and worms and all die for your vegetarian some so you're saying now that incidental deaths of insects beavers i'm not sure about beavers worms and insects in you know field deaths you think that that then justifies us in robbing the rights commodifying enslaving billions of beings so you equating incidental deaths because of civilization or to grow crops you're equating that with violating the rights of animals. Let me put this in a way that you understand. Imagine saying that incidental human deaths because of civilization, say construction deaths or transport deaths, are the same as the slave trade. You can see an obvious difference there because human beings also die on farms too, plant farms. They die in food production generally. They can die in slaughterhouses, from cuts. They can die in transit driving food around for us, okay, they're incidental deaths. Imagine saying, okay, because there are incidental deaths in food transport, we're now justified in robbing human rights, enslaving people and cutting their heads off. That is the logical leap you're making. Most of that data on crop death shows that the animals don't actually die from a harvester. They die from birds of prey. So how do you know whether those birds of prey wouldn't have got their prey anyway, even if the crop wasn't there? It in no way justifies violating animal rights, just like incidental human deaths don't justify violating human rights. Let's go. Something is going to die so you can live. Something is going to die so you can live. So we must cause the biggest mass murder of animals you've ever seen. This is a fundamental law of the universe, and because I'm a realist, I refuse to live in a world where I ignore these fundamental laws. Well, you know what, Andrew? Something has to die in order for me to live, so I'm gonna kill as much as I can. I'm gonna violate the rights of as many beings, living, conscious, sentient beings as I can. Don't wanna disrupt the fundamental laws of the universe. Does your philosophy apply out to human beings as well? I wouldn't put it past you. It may be unfortunate, but there is no nice way to die. Well, there are better ways to die. You could die of old age with your family around you in your sleep without pain, but there is definitely no nice way to be murdered because whether you torture me first and kill me or kill me, either way, I'm dead. So neither of those options are nice. One might be with less suffering, but they are both still murder. Now you're equating dying with murder, with robbing the rights and lives of these animals for an unjustifiable reason. Now, what you went on to say after that 
is pretty sick, actually. I will sit and watch a video of a slaughterhouse while eating a bucket of KFC chicken with absolutely no remorse. There is no nice way to die. There is only life and death. You will sit there eating a bucket of KFC whilst looking at chickens being shackled by their legs, hung upside down and having their throats slashed. And they can be flailing around on those uh, shackles and, you know, suffering. And they've lived a life of suffering in a factory farm. And you will eat their bodies while watching them suffer. It doesn't get much more sick than that. So, Andrew Tate, I know you've got a, a dog charity where you rescue dogs in Romania. I remember you even saying in a podcast, if anyone stole your dog, that'd be the end of them. Imagine if I said something like this. I'm a realist. I never go against the fundamental laws of the universe. If I see dogs being shackled and having their throats slit in Yulin, China for the dog meat festival, I can watch them suffer and die in their own blood whilst eating Kentucky Fried Dog with no remorse whatsoever. Can you imagine if I said something like that, bro? You'd probably be pretty disgusted at me. And uh, you know, if I took all your rescue dogs to a slaughterhouse, watched them be decapitated, and for a bucket of their fried flesh, what, did, what would you think? What would you think of me? These animals must die so I can survive. He's right in saying that there has to be a certain number of incidental deaths for civilization, and that goes for humans and animals. There has to be a certain number of human beings that die for construction, in factories, and in transport, those humans are not having their rights violated. Imagine if I said, well, there has to be incidental human deaths in order for us to have civilization. Therefore, I can enslave and kill as many human beings as I want because I'm a realist. And, and he thinks that chickens have to die in a slaughterhouse in order for him to survive. Like, do you have any evidence that you need to eat KFC to survive, bro? Do you have any evidence you need to eat meat to survive, bro? Do you have any evidence that you need to eat animal products, period, to survive? Well, we've got plenty of evidence that suggests vegan diets can be healthy for all stages of the life cycle. The reason that veganism is being purported and propagated by the Matrix is because they don't want you to eat meat. They want you to eat vegetables. They want you to eat soy. <laughs> This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The Matrix, whatever that is, wants you to eat soy and vegetables. They don't want you to eat meat. So you're telling me, bro, for the first 25 years of my life, that wasn't the Matrix advertising meat to me? That wasn't the Matrix subsidizing factory farmed meat and subsidizing slaughterhouses with billions and billions and billions of dollars to make factory farmed meat and uh, flesh in general more affordable. So that is not the matrix. But the matrix is the broccoli industry, the tofu industry. It's not where you get your chickens from, KFC. It's not the ones who are selectively breeding chickens into Frankenstein bodies to decapitate them. I've never trusted anything more in my entire life than factory farms and slaughterhouses. You know, that's not a horror story. Tofu and broccoli, pfft. That's the conspiracy. They want you to eat soy because it's going to lower your testosterone levels. What did I say earlier about how they do not want you strong physically? They do not want you strong. Look at this paranoia he's feeding into the millions of young men who follow him and are influenced by him. They don't want you strong. They want you eating soy. Got any evidence for that, Tate? There's a meta-analysis of randomized control trials where they looked at a total of 41 studies. Meta-analysis of RCTs is quite high on the hierarchy of evidence. So this is actually very good research. And it showed that regardless of the statistical model, no significant effects of soy protein or isoflavone intake on any of the outcomes measured were found. So Tate, where are you getting this evidence that soy makes men weak or lowers testosterone? Sounds like maybe something Alex Jones would say, maybe something one of these carnivores would say. Do you need any evidence to take on a belief or is this just some conspiracy that you've made up in your head or you've seen an article on soy? What is it? Like, look around you, bro. Look what the Matrix wants you to eat. <laughs> you know, I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. After nine years, you know what I realize? Ignorance is bliss. Look at the advertising, green grasses and pastures. And when we go in there and investigate these places, horrible suffering. When we leave cameras in slaughterhouses, horrible violence, horrible suffering. But nah, the Matrix wants you eating soy that will feminize you, even though I've got no evidence for that claim. If you eat a bunch of meat, 80% of my calories are from meat. People always say to me all the time, Tate, how do you have such a good physique when all you do is drink? 80% of his calories are from meat. So Tate, you are going to make some baseless claim about soy lowering testosterone, and then you're going to recommend people eat red meat, which is a class 2A carcinogen, 
classified by the World Health Organization. You also eat bacon, which is a class one carcinogen. It has been scientific consensus for a long time. Saturated fat raises your LDL cholesterol in your blood and causes heart disease. This is a very well established medical fact. So you're encouraging men to eat more of what will eventually give them a heart attack. He's constantly promoting partying, drinking, right? And alcohol is a known carcinogen. They smoke tobacco, right? He's, his brother there, Tristan, has got a cigar in his hand. But you're worried about a bean, soy. Ridiculous. Well, firstly, not all I do is drink. Secondly, I built it when I was young, training like an animal, and it's easy to maintain. Thirdly, I'm on absolutely no testosterone replacement. I'm 36. My testosterone levels at the absolute upper echelon to the limit. I have no testosterone replacement, no pills, nothing, no protein shakes, nothing. I'm building my own supplement line now, which is the only one I'm going to start taking. And I eat a bunch of meat. So what Tate is doing now is called an anecdote. He's saying, look at me, look at my body, look how strong I am. Well, Tate, anyone can have a body like yours eating McDonald's if they just calorie restrict and do weights. I mean, you've been training as a top level athlete your entire life, right? So of course you're going to have a physique like that. On the hierarchy of evidence, anecdotes are way down the bottom, right below expert opinion. Randomized control trials are right at the top. A meta-analysis here, the soy one we showed you. So we should believe your cool story over... Peer-reviewed science. All right. I'm a meat eater. 80% of my calories comes from meat. Yep. I, I I don't. And people say, oh, I have meat too. A hamburger meal is not meat. That's a little bit of meat, a bunch of bread and a bunch of French fries. No. Three steaks. Three steaks. No rice. Done. So he's advocating for incredibly high meat diet, no fiber, and no plants to his followers. Impressionable young men. Pretty crazy. It is abundantly clear that diets higher in whole plant foods have better health outcomes. And this is very well established. He's asking you to do the opposite. That, that's how we eat. Tabasco. They, they don't want you strong. They want you weak. And that's why they're promoting this veganism garbage. This is paranoia. They don't want you strong. They want you weak. Who's to say you can't be strong eating a plant-based diet? Like, where is your evidence for these claims? This is all conspiratorial. If the Matrix really wanted us to promote animal rights and veganism, why, like, why, why isn't it just on every single TV commercial? Why haven't they made eating meat illegal? They could make animal, phase out animal agriculture in the next 10 years, right? And then bring in all new plant-based meats. Like you're seeing a little bit of it, but that's largely because of independent companies, um, startups, and vegan advocates trying to solve the problem of the animal rights violations and animal killing and the environmental uh, damage. This is all, a lot of this is coming from grassroots activists and organizations. Like, if it's such a bloody conspiracy, mate, why do I have to work so hard against people who are so programmed? Oh, lions eat meat. Oh, they've been eating meat for thousands of years. Uh, la, 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 la. Why, why are people so programmed and why do they have to rely so heavily on propaganda campaigns? And why do we have to go, constantly go into factory farms and slaughterhouses and expose them and bring out the truth? And when we bring out the truth, it gets censored. What are you on about, Andrew? Like, what are you on about, mate? It's the other way around. They don't want you to find out the truth about meat. They want you to keep eating meat. Who the hell are they? I don't bloody know. I'm falling into the they trap. <laughs> every single thing that the Matrix purports, every single thing that the Matrix is telling you to do is designed to make you weaker and easier to program. What's being advertised to us the most out of any other thing? Well, it's meat, isn't it? It's constantly meat. And, you know, look at the biggest companies are all selling meat, eight, eight. So I guess the Matrix wants you to eat meat, so that's going to make you weak. So maybe you shouldn't eat meat, I guess, say, hey? Like, what are you talking about, bro? You think the Matrix are just promoting veganism to everyone? Like, that would make my job a lot easier, actually, if they were doing that. That would be, I mean, I would like that. I would like that people stopped eating animals and stopped uh, abusing sentient conscious beings. But the truth is, it's been a battle from day dot, and it's not what he thinks, because he's looking at it from the outside. He's seeing the effects of activism. He's seeing the effects of the vegan movement, and we are making an effect, and he thinks that that's the government. So, Andrew, I would love to take you into a factory farm and slaughterhouse so you could see what they are trying to hide from people. So, Andrew's logic here actually works against him in a very, very big way. They are trying to make your mind empty. You must resist the slave mind. You must resist the slave mind. You're trying to wake people up, Andrew, but you're actually lulling people back to sleep, getting them eating those murdered animal bodies, getting them falling for the propaganda that's been this way for so long, mate. You know, people are finally starting to wake up about what happens to the animals and you're lulling them back to sleep and you're promoting all this fear nonsense and 
conspiracy theories without any evidence. So you're not even teaching your following to critically think. You're teaching them just to listen to you. In the interest of uh, spreading this positive message about eating animals. Tristan, did you just say you're spreading a positive message about eating animals? Who's it positive for? I mean, it must be nice for you, you know, multimillionaires going and eating the steak, but it's not positive for the animals who are literally decapitated in slaughterhouses so that you can eat them. So who's it positive for? Um, I'm going to give you guys an argument to take home that I think is original to me. I think I came up with it. You know, somebody decides not to eat me and they really say, I don't want to eat me. I don't think it's 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 uh, for me. When you go vegan, you actually go vegan for the animal victims. That's fine. But when the vegans go too far is when they say humans shouldn't eat meat. No human on earth should eat meat. I don't really hear vegans saying no human on earth should eat meat even if they're about to die in a survival situation like uh so i don't know it's a bit of a straw man but let's keep going bring up the maasai tribe the maasai are not just a tribe the maasai are a people uh that inhabit most of west africa from 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 nigeria all the way down to south africa and these people have a very ingenious way of living what they do is essentially they have cows cattle with them and they walk around with the cattle and the cattle eat the inedible plants thorns grass things that humans can't eat in land where humans cannot grow food they're in a bit of a different situation to you tristan you're a multi-millionaire you're sitting in a mansion and you're eating three steaks a night at an expensive restaurant like how can you compare yourself in any way to people living in some dire situation and then they live off the milk and the blood of those cows there is no other way for that that human uh species uh, that human population uh tribe which has been around for longer than any modern civilization by the way to flourish and and thrive in that area flourish and thrive the messiah people have a life expectancy of 42 to 44 what do you want about bro they've got one of the lowest life expectancies out of nearly anyone so what are you trying to say? They eat like raw meat, raw honey. They drink blood. They drink blood, dude. Why would you use an example like that? It works against, your argument works against you. Like, are you trying to make a health argument here, an ethics argument? What argument are you trying to make that, that not everyone can be vegan? Well, we know that Inuits who are living in a snow can't grow plants. Imagine if there was a, a tribe of people who lived on an island where all they had was each other to eat. You'd be like, yeah, well, they're, they're on that island. They don't have any other options, so they eat each other. You'd be like, well, that's a human rights violation, isn't it? But they, yeah, but they don't have any other choice, mate. What are they What are they supposed to do? Okay, why are you eating that person then? Because the the, the human eating tribe does that. You know, they they, they they because they do it. Yeah, but yeah, but bro, you're in civilization. So what's your excuse to do it? I'm using them as an excuse to do it. Well, bro, you've got you've got plants to eat, edible plants. You know, you're a millionaire, sitting in a mansion. You can eat whatever you want. So why are you choosing to cut off animals' heads? Why are you leveraging their situation to justify your own? Without this ingenious way of recycling plant proteins through uh, their cattle. And I think it's absolutely genius. So you think it's absolutely genius to feed plants to animals and then eat the animal? Why would that be genius, bro? You know, <laughs> it's absolutely the most stupid, inefficient way to produce food is to grow plants and feed the plants to the animals and then kill the animal and eat the animal. It's ridiculous. I mean, I guess this is a good segue into the Oxford research that showed that 83% of farmland is used by meat and dairy and it provides just 18% of calories. So that's an incredibly stupid way of producing food. And that if we all adopted a vegan diet, global farmland could be reduced by more than 75%, an area equivalent to the US, China, the EU, and Australia combined. And we could still feed the world. So if you think everybody should be vegan, these people aren't in the privileged position where they can go to Whole Foods. Well, you are in a privileged position, Tristan. Why don't we just talk about you for a sec? You are in a privileged position. So I don't know why you're using their situation to justify your own. It's it's very bizarre. They aren't in the privileged position where they can go to the, the local supermarket. But you can. So what point are you trying to make? And eat whatever they like and buy all the fucking vegetables and fucking tofu. I advocate to people in the UK, in Australia, in the US. Like, I don't go to... Inuits in Antarctica telling them they should be vegan. You should really think these arguments through a little better, mate. That's all. So take that argument home. And anytime any idiot says that every human on earth should be a vegan, please mention them aside, Trey. Dude, if they're a bad example. I do think that animals deserve rights all over the world. We shouldn't be exploiting and violating the rights of animals all over the world. Yes, that, that, that should be adhered to. Just like humans deserve rights all over the world, animals deserve rights all over the world. Shout out to the Messiah.
probably not watching this, but whatever. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I really don't. They probably don't have the privilege to watch a live stream on Rumble because they are literally doing their best to survive. Anyway, so that was the Tate Brothers on Rumble. You know, incredibly dangerous the misinformation they spread. All you need is basic logic to debunk what they're saying. They make so many claims with no evidence whatsoever, and they've got people just lapping it up because they're so persuasive. So anyways, to the Tate Brothers, if you would like to discuss this with me, I would love to have a chat with you about this because you really got to change your positions on these things. Just, like, just say, look... I don't care about violating animal rights. I don't mind cutting their heads off because I like to eat steak. It's just bizarre to me that Andrew Tate has, you know, a dog charity where they help dogs and he's fine with decapitating cows, but would be so upset at decapitating dogs. It's just such a clear double standard. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Leave your comments down below and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.